for next up on Open Mic. You're taller than that, jeez. Are you the, uh, probably taller than Steve even. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, my spouse and I were uh, uh, eating at a Korean restaurant on North Road. On the news ticker, they were talking about how in Korea there was this guy who set fire to his neighbor's house because he thought his neighbor's cat was too loud. <laughs> so that's this one. Well, recently, recently in the news, a 60-year-old man set fire to his neighbor's house because his cat was too loud. Of course, it happened in the countryside where people are a little off. One can imagine the endless rice paddies, drone of insects chirping, so free of distraction that any distraction is magnified. In the night, a shrieking scream of an adult tabby male, like a forest witch. The rooster would be expected, but the cat, on no schedule, is unnervingly unpredictable. He asks his neighbor. The neighbor doesn't know where the cat's from, but under her spell, he's made up his mind already. It's his and he's burning the place down, cat and all. <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm a school teacher in Surrey. I have a grade four class, and uh, this one is called Mouse Droppings. Uh, I work in uh, the first school house in Surrey. It's uh, on Jorth Road. Anyway, I work in the one-room schoolhouse that was annexed to become the rest of the school. I came in to find them littered all over my desk. Finally, an excuse to organize. I moved all of my papers aside and noticed the sock snowman my student had made for me had a hole in it. Rice was scattered around. Why did they have to go for that? <laughs> Littered all over my desk were candies, chocolates, half-drunk coffee cups, but they scurried past all those to go for the rice and the snowman. He handed it to me sheepishly before Christmas break. The others had bought me candies, coffees, chocolates. Another, sorry, made of an old sock, rice scrounged from the cupboard, eyes drawn on it with Sharpie. Here, Mr. Stevens, it's nothing. I stacked him on my desk, front and center, my sweet snowman with a smile that would never melt. Standing over the bin, with him limp in my hand, crying rice tears, I let go. The mice now leave me alone, with a puddle where there should be a smiling man of snow. And one more. Um, uh, I wrote this. Uh, yeah, I'll do this. I want them to, uh, no, no, no. I wrote this one, I finished it earlier today. And it's what you like, you know, when you can't remember if it's good or not, but you have to look at it later, so let's find out if it works at all. So, noise canceling. They get those terrible headphones, which I'm sure are terrible. I don't know how they work, where they cancel noise and spin it backwards or something. Awful things. Getting rid of the background noise. Walking down busy streets. The world absorbed and twisted up to be played backwards produces silence. Through headphones, I am blasted with pubes from passing cars, tweets from songbirds, yet not yachts from waving friends. I see them all and hear only the Chopin I've played. The world sure is a busy place. Soft coups drown out tormenting screams. Dreams and nightmares combine. You wake remembering nothing. Give and take. Ahs and ha's, eems and me's, bangs and nabs. Eyes closed, my hands rest on my headphones hearing Bach. The two of us, screaming at each other, have produced nothing. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, screaming at each other. The two of us have produced nothing, cancelling out each other in our contrary views. Upstairs, 
we faintly hear Claire de Lune outside the traffic and song breaks. We've become cancelled out. We've become background noise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.